Hiya folks, hope everyone's well and staying safe. Um, we've had our first vaccination in the house so things are moving forward for us. So today's recipe, we're going to be making vegan wheat balls. Don't know why I looked down, but I did. Today's recipe is we're going to be making vegan wheat balls. Um, they're a great substitute for meatballs, um, great in a sub. I will show you the recipe for the sub in a different recipe just in case you want to go out and buy your own baguettes or subs to put these in because it is a lot of work to make everything. Um, but if you're just wanting the wheat balls, this is the recipe for you. Let's crack on then. So the very first thing we're looking to do is to drain a can of chickpeas and we're going to reserve the aquafaba, that's the liquid that comes in the can with the chickpeas. Aquafaba, if you don't already know, can be used as a binding agent in the exact same way the egg can be used as a binding agent. So we're using it for that purpose here, but we don't need all of it, so we're going to reserve what is there, use some of it, and then the rest we're going to freeze, which I'll touch upon later in the video, how to go about that as well. We then want to take and add our chickpeas to our food processor with a blade attachment. Now normally I don't add the parsley at this stage, it generally goes in after I've blended my chickpeas, garlic and mushrooms and goes in with all the other ingredients. Guess it's pressure making the video or something, but I dumped the parsley in at this stage. The wheat ball still worked out perfectly, so hey what do I know, go with it this way or go with it the way I normally do. Either way, it works. Next up we're adding our garlic. I've explained in other videos that I'm using these frozen blocks of garlic because of the things of Brexit, because of Covid, and it's easier to get a hold of these and always have them in the freezer. It also saves a bit of money with rising food costs. Yes, a clove of garlic doesn't cost much, but this costs less. Um, is it just as good as fresh garlic? No, it's not. So you can either use two cloves of fresh garlic or you can use this here, half a block of it, which is the equivalent. It still works well, just not as good. We are then looking for 80 grams of mushrooms, that's two large mushrooms or three medium mushrooms. It just depends on the size of your mushrooms, how many you're going to need. But about 80 grams is the, is the weight ratio that we're looking for. And this stage is habit more than anything else. You really shouldn't need to do this if your food processor's any good. But I tend to chop my mushrooms up just a little bit before I actually add them to the food processor. Um, but in all honesty and all truthfulness, you shouldn't need to do this, but I do it anyway. And now we want to take and pulse our food processor until we have everything coarsely ground. It's your chickpeas here is the one you really need to keep an eye on. They are the ones that take that little bit longer to break down, so that's what we're watching. And once we see them coarsely ground, we know we're there. Now, if you have a dough paddle for your food processor, swap over from the blade attachment. Now, if you don't, you can continue to use the blade if it's the only way you can actually mix it together, unless you want to go in by hand and spatula. But if you want to continue to use the machine, if you've got the paddle, switch over. If not, use the blade, otherwise it's down to the spatula. Your choice. Now, this stage here, I am still entirely on the fence about. We do need two tablespoons of aquafaba. It acts as a binding agent, the same way egg acts as a binding agent. It will help hold the wheat balls together. The part I'm on the fence about is do or do we not need to whisk it. I've tried it both ways and I can't make up my mind whether or not it actually creates a better binding once we've whisked it and brought it into a froth than it does whether we just put the raw aquafaba straight into our food processor. I can't make up my mind. Sometimes I try it, I think, yeah, that's better bound. Other times I try it to say, no, no difference. Um, so it's close. If it is making a difference, it's not making a huge difference is probably what I'm wanting to say. So it's optional whether you do this stage or whether you put your aquafaba straight into your food processor and don't worry about doing the, the mixing part with the whisk. But anyways, whether or whether you don't do this stage, your aquafaba will now go and get added to the rest of your food processor. And I mentioned earlier on that we're going to freeze our leftover aquafaba. That's because it freezes really well. You can keep it almost indefinitely in the freezer. And that means you've got your egg substitute ready to go as soon as you need it. Now, I've lucked out very, very much so. These exact ice cube trays you see here, 
it's almost the millimetre half a tablespoon size of holes in it so it means two cubes and I've got a full tablespoon give or take literally a few millilitres so you get them in various places I've seen them on Amazon I've seen them in the pound stores they seem to be ubiquitous and you can find them across many different shops but these exact ones are half a tablespoon and now that we've dealt with our reserved aquafaba and got it in the freezer we can crack on with the rest of our ingredients so first up we're going to add two tablespoons of soy sauce and next up it's half a tablespoon of olive oil and then we are looking to add two tablespoons of tomato paste, tomato puree, however it is you say it, but two tablespoons. And now that we have those added, we're going to add our vital wheat gluten. And for that, we're looking for half a cup, or for those people who prefer to work in grams, 65 grams of vital wheat gluten. And now we can follow up with our nutritional yeast. And for the nutritional yeast, we're looking for a quarter of a cup and again, for those who prefer to measure everything in grams, it's 14 grams of nutritional yeast. And then it's our basil, and it's one teaspoon of basil, again, put straight into the food processor. Followed by oregano. I'm sorry, any American viewers, I cannot say it the way you say it. I'm going with oregano. So that's three quarters of a teaspoon. Then it's our sweet paprika. If you want, you could use smoked paprika here, but I specifically use sweet paprika, and it's one teaspoon of that that we're adding to the mixture. Then it's our salt, and for the salt, we're only needing half a teaspoon. It's not a recipe that requires a lot of salt, because there's not a lot to what we've got here, so half a teaspoon. And we can then top that off with some ground black pepper, and just like the salt, we're looking for half a teaspoon. Now you can buy breadcrumbs in the packet, but why do that if you've got bread in the house? Here this is part of one of my bloomer loaves that I'm cutting a section off of. We are looking for approximately half a slice of breadcrumbs, which is about 40 grams is what we're looking for. So half a slice, 40 grams. I was very lucky with that cut. Um, 41 grams, but that's what we're looking for. We're then going to take and put it either in a separate food processor or do this stage at the very beginning if you're having to share the same food processor and we're just going to chop it up and be able to get some lovely breadcrumbs. And now that all our ingredients have been added to the food processor we're just going to bring them together. So we're going to turn it on and leave it running for two minutes. That's really all it takes. It doesn't take long just to bring everything together. Once we see all the mixture nicely bound, nicely mixed together we're ready to then move on to the next stage and actually get some wheat balls made. So once your mixture has come together, as you see it here, just take it out onto a work surface. Be careful, use a spatula or something. This is a very sticky mixture and it's going to get all over your hands. It's the nature of it. Expect it. When it comes to actually working our balls, what we need to do is spray our hands with oil and keep spraying our hands with oil as we go through the process. Because after a couple of balls, it starts to come away and you don't want your hands a gooey, yucky mess at the end. You're going to be that way partially, but the more you do to it to prevent it, the better. And this is exactly what I'm doing here. Just get some spray oil, spray it on those hands and then do some onto your scales as well, just to try and keep your hands and your scales as slick as possible as we measure out these balls. So just grab a little chunk of your mixture and you'll get used to looking at what roughly 19 grams is, but as you go through, but we're looking for 19 grams per ball. So if you need to remove some, do so until we've hit the magic number, roll it into a ball and then we're going to sit it on a silicon baking tray at the side and repeat again and again and again until we've got a tray full of 19 gram weighted wheat balls. Now if an occasional ball weighs slightly heavier than 19 and comes in at 20 grams, don't worry. But ideally we're looking to try and get everyone at that 19 grams. One or two slips through, that's fine. You should still end up roughly with your desired quantity of balls that we're looking for, which is 28 wheat balls. And as mentioned previously, we're just going to line up each of our balls as we make them on a silicon lined baking tray, a normal full size baking sheet. 
and once they're all laid out we're going to give them a wee quick spray with the same cooking oil that we've been used to keep our hands and keep our scales lubricated and then they're ready to go in the oven. Now whilst we have been forming our balls we should have also been preheating our oven and we're looking to bring it up to 190 degrees celsius. We're then going to whack them into the oven for 20 minutes but halfway through we want to bring them out and then very very quickly turn them over and that will give the best most even cook that we can get to them so that's 20 minutes 190 but halfway through turn over and get them back in and now that we've got our wheat balls made what we want to do is prepare our sub rolls and prepare our sauces so for our sub rolls all we want to do is cut along the side of it and then just peel it open slightly as you see me doing here we don't want to cut all the way through we want a sealed edge at the end so as I'm doing, just slice a nice knife tip in and then bring the heel of the knife down at the end. And that way we should still have the, the joined section at the far end. But the rolls are better cut this way than across the top. And you'll find the rolls in the other recipe that I'll put up for you. And now that the rolls are cut, we're going to prepare our sauces. Now, I use two sauces um, with this particular recipe, one of which I get lazy with, because there's nothing wrong with being lazy every now and again. You're, after all, putting a lot of work into this recipe, as it is anyway. So for cheese sauce, instead of making my own, I just use the stuff that Bisto provides. Um, and to that, though, I do add two teaspoons of smoked paprika. So we're talking four tablespoons of the cheese sauce, two teaspoons of smoked paprika and 250 milliliters of water and that gives a really nice tasty cheese sauce to add to the rest of the ingredients or the rest of the meal. And whilst our smoked paprika cheese sauce is setting up, we're going to take and we're going to add some of our marinara sauce into the rolls. Now just take a long handled teaspoon and just layer it down inside the rolls just so we've got some sauce flavour running through our sub rolls and then from there what we're going to do is going to take our wheat balls and we're going to jam them right into the split in the roll. Five wheat balls per roll and then once we've got five wheat balls in each sub we're going to take and we're going to layer more marinara sauce down on top. This is why this is a messy meal but it's also why it's a good meal because messy meals are often the greatest meals. So layer in your marinara sauce on top. And once we've got that layered in, we're going to then take and we're going to pour that cheese sauce and drizzle it all the way down on top of that. And it is yum yum time. So, there we go. Yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Wheat balls. Um, you can keep these for about three or four weeks in the freezer, a few days in the fridge. Um, we'll be having these at the weekend. They're getting made midweek. This is, I can't remember what day this is. Wednesday. This is Wednesday. Duh! <laughs> oh, it's all blending into one. Um, but these are for later in the week, so they'll go into the fridge and be stored till then. Um, and we'll be having them on subs. So if I remember when I make the subs and we make them in the weekend, I'll put it all together and give you a wee taste test. But trust me, they're scrummy. So we'll find out if there isn't an edit of this bit after the. Blah, 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 blah. We will find out after this bit if I remember to film it. Hi, folks. Excuse me. This is going to get messy. Um, as you saw the amount of sauce that I put on these when I was constructing it in the video but goddamn delish so I'll have a mouthful and then I'm going to sign off so thanks for watching take care I'm going to enjoy my dinner <laughs>